All right, let's get into our next uh, discussion now. Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves has been on a steady and steady rise since the later part of 2017. Yes, indeed. Now, reports from the Central Bank of Nigeria and CBN says that the country's external reserves hit a five-year high on of uh, $47.3 billion uh, on April the 5th, 2018. The last time the country recorded uh, forex reserves at this level was in July of 2013. Mm. Now, the increase of the country's reserves in recent months is driven by its successful eurobond offerings coupled with higher oil production and prices. And while earning more revenue is good news to everyone, like we've been talking about, mm. but what many Nigerians are interested in is how the increase translates to a better standard of living and basically food on the table. Yes. That's the big, big, big question. Well, we have uh, joining us via phone, uh, well, Skype actually, financial experts in Nimeka Obiari. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning, Ngazi. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. the, the last time uh, the Forex Reserve went up to about 40 or $43 billion, the first question I asked you is if you were impressed and you said, nope, it's nothing to be so excited about. Are you impressed now? Not at all. <laughs> Talk to us about it. Yes. Okay, Mike, um, let's get down to business. Um, the question we should be asking ourselves, yes, we have accretion in our foreign reserve. What is the cost of this accretion? Mm. Could oil prices have been selling at an average of $70 per barrel and it's still going up? Our budget benchmark was at about $44.5 per barrel. Of course, we have savings. And uh, the question you should be asking yourself, mm. if we are building up reserves because we have excess accruals excess revenues because of um, provident have been good to us, crude oil prices, which is beyond our control, has gotten to a level we did not anticipate it. Remember what is fraction of this pressure, the volatility, the, the, the political development in the Middle, Middle East. Mm. Trump is threatening to fire at Syria. Mm. Russia is threatening to retaliate. A lot of other factors which are totally out of our control. It's not as if we did some depth physical and the monetary policy maneuvers to bring about this development. And on the other hand, we should be looking, we're looking at the balance sheet here. If we say we have an accretion of $47 million, $47 billion, what of our debt profile? I do not understand why a country will be building up reserves, at the same time, building up debt at a very atrocious level. As I talk to you, our total borrowing since 2015 now is about 13 trillion naira, Mike. Mm. 13 mm. trillion naira is close to about 36 to 40, uh, 38 billion dollars. Mike, if we grew our foreign reserve from 29 billion in May 2015 to 47 billion in, in April 2018, that's the difference of 47 minus 29. We're talking about 18 billion. But within the same time frame, we have ramped up our debt profile to an atrocious level of almost about $38 billion. Net, net, we are heavily in a hole. It's like a man who earned a salary, whose salary was increased from one naira to two naira, and the man go borrowing about 10 naira. He's still in a deeper debt than he even envisaged. What to concern us here is we were promised diversification. We were promised restructuring of our economic, physical, and political base. By this same government in May 29, 2015, three years down the line, Mike, we are talking about 36 months down the line. We have not diversified nada. Yeah, um, uh, no, Berry, but yes, you, you say that, but this government is saying uh, we've done a lot in the area of uh, agriculture and the manufacturing sector because of some of the uh, forex uh, concessions we've made for them. Uh, uh, they are, you know, uh, making some improvement, and so we're earning. Th there's some kind of improvement coming from that um, angle, and of course, coupled with the CBN's, coupled with the CBN's uh, policies, which it says it's, you know, doing well, absolutely well. Because the numbers do not show it. The facts on the ground do not support the rhetorics and the propaganda and the lies. I will give you an example. Because take this for instance, we were told 
in March 2018 that we've moved production of rice from 40% locally to 95% locally. We are told that import has been reduced by over 60%. Yeah. Because basic economics, you don't need to be an economist to know that there's a lot of demand and supply. If the supply and stretches beyond demand, prices will come down. If demand is more than supply, if we have actually ramped up supply to such an, a glorious level as they want us to believe. Because I bought a bag of rice in May 2015 for 9,000 naira, 50 kg, I'm not talking about 25 kg. Mm. Today, the same bag of rice is selling for 18,000. How come we have increased production? How come we have increased output? How come that we have overstretched demand and yet the price are not coming down? The numbers do not add up. And I will tell you this, if you look at the MBS, even CBN statistics, you will discover that crude oil earnings still contribute over 95% of our exports. Go back to 1960 to 1964. I always make reference to those golden era. I always make reference to those golden periods when we had a clearly defined physical, um, a clearly defined productive economy, an economy that was based in robust fiscal framework, an economy that was built on production, an economy that was built away from crude oil. Remember, we discovered oil in 1958. Yeah. Before then, the crude oil costs have not come upon us. We had the granite pyramid. We had the cotton of the north. We had the palm oil of the of the east. We have the cocoa of the west. Because if we are truly diversifying, the numbers we show, it will simply show, for example, now, if our foreign exchange reserve has grown from 27, 29 billion to 47 billion, yeah. or every quarter, we should be seeing that the non-oil products, the non-oil earnings, will have gone up at least 30 percent in the spite of the fact in spite of the up. fact that our import bill has reduced from about uh, five billion dollars to uh, 1.5 billion because it's not true because it, what are we talking about that's here? what the cbn is saying because it, let me ask you a question the nmpc from november 2017 till now told us that they spent $5.6 billion importing petroleum products. Because is that not import? What are we talking about here? Because the monies we used to import those refined products, where did they come from? I, it, I shudder at how, why we buy this kind of narrative without interrogating them. Just petroleum import, white petroleum import alone, consumed over $5.6 billion of our forest earnings. And somebody is telling me that we spent only $1.9 billion. Give me a break. And I will tell you this. This is the same government that promised us that within a space of two years, that the issue of refiring or working will have been a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. And I am very, very sure. You see, one of the problems in Abuja, I don't know if there's something in Abuja, that once bright people enters Abuja, they will lose focus. Tachuku Ibe started very, very well. He promised us that he was going to diversify, he was going to restructure and reform the oil and gas industry. He promised us that he was going to concern and privatize the refineries and the downstream oil and gas assets. Because it, three years after, those refineries are not producing. We are not sweating our downstream oil and gas assets across the Federation. We are still holding on to moribund and obsolete assets that are not producing. We have not yet done the needful to ensure that we migrate from an import. Look around you. Mm. From Cote d'Ivoire to other little little countries in West Africa, they are not as import dependent as Nigeria, and we keep on doing this. The other day, they told us that they spent so, so what do we need to do then to have uh, more sustainable uh, growth, not just in terms of forex reserves, but uh, in terms of uh, real diversification of the economy? But because, like you say, really, the CBN is saying our policies are, you know, doing the magic, while the World Bank is saying it is um, the external uh, forces of, you know, increase in oil price, just like uh, you have said. Are you saying that no uh, domestic factors really have um, added to this um, uh, success that we're seeing or growth in the Forex Reserve? Because not realistically. I will tell you this. You, you see, eh, it is one thing to produce a document. You see, one of the problems we have in the public sector in Nigeria is we don't have accountability and consequent management procedure. What do I mean by accountability and consequent management, uh, management behavior? Because if you are employed in a bank, take for instance you're a market facing staff, a marketer, and you come in with lofty promise of what you want to do. I want to do the point of this, this, so, so amount in six months. 
I want to do social DTA in one month, in six months. I want to book social credit. I want to build social asset. Those things are recorded. And of course, we have a job description of what you will do and what is required to achieve that. After six months, management sits down to appraise what you promised and what you delivered. Yeah. And if for any reason you did not meet the decision, they will ship you out and replace with somebody that can do a better job. But in the public sector, because let me tell you, we have a very robust policy program, so that the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. I read that document and I was so excited. The document encapsulated programs, policies, activities that are supposed to be done by the MDAs to move our economy from oil sector dependent to other sectors. Mm -hmm. Take, for instance, housing. Fashion told us that are going to do over... 2 billion housing in three years. And they're going to raise a private sector-led funding for housing of about $1 trillion. Because it's almost one year after they launched that ERUGP with all manner of fanfare and glitterity. How many housing units have the Federal Ministry of Housing developed under that Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, as they promised us? Here, Brigade told us, in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, we mm. talked about how we're going to develop our manpowers. What have we done in the area of education? What are we doing in the area of health? Because we are doing nothing. Let me tell you, if I am the president of this country, I advocated and I said this, for Buhari and his team to work well, they must set up what I call a special forensic, a special forensic advising department in the presidency. What is the job of this unit? Mm. Is to aggregate all the deliverables. Look at every deliverable from, of all the MDAs. Ensure that timelines are put to those deliverables and resources required. And begin to help Mr. President to check those who have performed and those who have not performed. When there is no target, action and consequent um, uh, management, people will tend to promise and promise and not deliver. Yeah. And they will hide under sentiment, under politics, under loyalty, or whatever you may call it, without performance. We must put this country first. This country must be run like an enterprise. An enterprise. Every stakeholder in this country, every of those managing our ministries, right, Nemeka, department, and it must have targets of what they will achieve. Yeah, and they must Nemeka, we don't have, achieve those targets. Yeah, Nemeka, we don't have all the time, but let me ask you this question before we go. The point there is South Africa has about $50 billion as their uh, foreign reserve mm -hmm. uh, uh, earning, and the CBN governor has said that Nigeria will be hitting... Five, 50, 50 billion, 50, yeah, by, 50 the billion the by the end of the year. Now, in all of this, really, for Nigeria, whether our foreign reserve is increasing, who, who really benefits from the increase in foreign reserve when the average man, the SMEs, are still not having access to loans and all of that? Uh, Mike, you know, when you talk about this, what is the of this foreign reserve? Foreign reserve shows the level of import that it shows the level of the the periods of import that can be covered by the foreign reserve, assuming we do not earn any income. Mm -hmm. We look at our 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 uh, productive activities, our import activities, and we look at, okay, we have 50 billion. Assuming we do not earn any, any income in the next three, six, four, five months, will it be, how many months will we be able to cover before we start ending? That is what foreign reserve is all about. And I will tell you this, we'll keep on talking about foreign reserve. Look at South African economy. South Africa is a resource-rich economy. They have oil, they have um, diamond, they have gold. But can you take a time to look at the balance of South Africa? How much of South Africa foreign exchange comes from gold export, from diamond export, and from other manufacturing sector? You mentioned here, we do not have funds. We, we, the, even the private sector is not uh, assessing the funds. Central Bank told us that they have about 200 billion dollar for agri. They have that. How many of these private sector borrowers are getting access to this fund? And I will tell you this. If I am suppose, if I am in the place of the Honorable Minister of Finance, and I will tell you this, Nigeria is supposed to have at least a 500 billion to 1 trillion naira PPP fund. What do I mean by that? I gave you an example of sesame seed. Sesame seed oil is an oil that can give us more earning than crude oil over three times. And the cost of setting up the plant here is so cheap. Mm. We can in, in less than one year it can be put up. But the problem we have is that. We don't have focused leadership in across, mostly across the MDAs. Everybody is steeped in politics. Everybody is steeped in parochialism. People do not understand that failure to achieve targets, failure to accomplish all that you've mounted, is supposed to attract sanctions. Take for instance now, somebody said he was going to do 2 million housing units in three years. Mm -hmm. One year down the line, by now you should have done at least 500,000 housing units. We have not even set up the framework and models to achieve those. Nobody is being held accountable. They promise Nigerians and they don't deliver. And they forgot that promises that they to deliver is outright fraud and a form of corruption.
Okay, I, I do get your point, but the, the CBN in looking at this uh, leaps and bounds in our Forex Reserve says if things continue this way, it might be time uh, to begin to review the um, 41 items that have been excluded from Forex. As a matter of fact, it has just added um, starch or so. If the CBN goes ahead to review that and reduce the number of um, products excluded from Forex, are we going to lose some of these gains in the Forex uh, reserves? What's not going at, to happen? What are, what's the likely scenario? Not at all. Longer. See, the problem we have is not even banning those products. If you look at even the products that we banned, these are products we can competitively produce in Nigeria. I gave you an instance. Before Chivita and the rest of them came, started operations, we used to import a lot of um, fruit juice from abroad. But Chifita came, and today, if you go across households in Nigeria, most people do not even remember that I imported juice. People prefer those Chivita brand produced here in Nigeria because they are better quality, they have better taste, and they have better brand. Because one, they've been able to produce at competitively lower prices than imported goods, and they are better in terms of quality. Nigeria has the capacity to produce most of these things that we are importing. But the problem is that the cost of production in Nigeria is atrociously high. The cost of the debt of infrastructure, comparative to what is obtained in other countries. And I will give you another example here. I don't. I feel sorry for Godwin and Mefile. Do you know why I feel sorry for Godwin and Mefile? Mm. Why he is busy building up reserve to for seven billion dollars? Those in the physical side are busy accruing debt. Uh, All right. We, we, okay. He was making a very uh, strong point there. But, yes, uh, of course. The, um, the network it, wouldn't it, let. Uh, financial analysts him. like him have been saying there's a need for a convergence between the fiscal and monetary policies. Of, exactly. You know, and that. Doesn't he has seem always to talked about the issue of the, the private sector and public sector mm. participation and, and partnership and all of that. Mm. But anyway, that was uh, uh, Nemeko Biariri, a financial analyst, joining us on Skype. We talked about uh, the, Niger the Nigeria Foreign Reserve yep. increasing.